Hi, my name is Ted, and welcome to my YouTube channel, which is dedicated to astronomy and astroimaging. Uh, today, I'm going to be reviewing another great product by a company I definitely recommend. Um, it's called Saboni. Uh, this is the SB105 2 megapixel digital astronomy camera. It is an introductory camera. But before we get on this review, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself and why I set up this channel. Uh, I started in astronomy about a year and a half, closer to two years now. I also started doing astroimaging, you know, around the same time. But as most, most people know, that buying a telescope and mounts and accessories can be very, very costly. This hobby is, is an expensive hobby, per se. So, I went out and started Google searching because I wanted to get some new eyepieces to add to my inventory. And I came across the company called Saboni. Now, if you haven't seen my eyepiece review video, check it out in, on my site here, my channel. Uh, also check out their store. Um, they have some amazing products and they're very, very affordable. And also, if you're just starting out in astronomy and you're looking to get yourself a nice little simple telescope or an introductory telescope per se, um, like I said, check them out. Uh, they do sell telescopes as well. They also sell binoculars. So if you're just looking to get a pair of simple binoculars, um, they have pretty much everything. Um, they sell filters, eyepieces, finder scopes, guide scopes, cameras, uh, you name it, um, they'll most likely have it. So just kind of check out their stores and stuff and see what they got. I do recommend them. Um, so far, if you see my channel, I'll have a lot of stuff from them uh, doing reviews on them. So I, like I said, I, I, I went out and, like I said, searched for products that are very affordable, but also also great in quality, per se. Uh, and that doesn't mean I'm not going to do, you know, reviews on Celestron or Meet or Orion products. That doesn't mean that. Uh, I just, I'm, like I said, I'm an amateur and I want to save money myself because this hobby is very expensive. So, so I'm going to be going out there testing other products out as well. So with that being said, uh, let's get on with this review here. I'm going to show you the contents of this box. I'm also going to tell you a little bit how I set up my camera to capture the images of what I'm, I'm going to show you some videos and images as well, like what I've taken with this camera. Um, unfortunately, I can't shoot live view with it for some reason because my desktop recorder uh, whether I'm using this camera or my ZWO camera, it shuts off for some reason and it doesn't allow me to record it. So I do apologize that it's not in live view mode. Um, it has nothing to do with this camera. It has to do with my recording desktop recording software. But I will show you how I set my settings to get those pictures I got and also the videos of the moon and Jupiter as well. Now, this camera is a lunar and planetary imaging camera only. It's not designed for deep space imaging. Now, it doesn't mean you can't capture a deep space image. If you can, I haven't tried it, so I don't know. Um, but it is designed, like I said, more for lunar and planetary. It is an introductory camera as well. Um, it is two megapixels. It's a 1920 by 1080. Uh, it has 30 frames per second when you're shooting AVI. And it does come with software and all the accessories you need to get you started. So let's go with the contents of this box. It comes with a disc, which has the software on it. Uh, also a little uh, instruction pamphlet also explaining the specs on the camera. Um, the software that they use is called SharpCap. Uh, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't know what version comes on the disc. Um, I already had it installed on my computer. I use version 3.1 because 3.1 has better options to choose from, whether you, because it allows you to choose from JPEG, TIFF, um, PNG and serve files and stuff like that. And I think the versions 2.5 and 2.9 doesn't have all those options. Plus this has a better, uh, the 3.1 has a little better gain control and brightness control as well. It does come with a very long USB cable. Comes with a cleaning cloth. And again, it comes with a nice little camera. Now this camera is very tiny. It's very lightweight. Uh, the construction, the frame of it's very, very solid. Again, it is a two megapixel. I'll try to get close so you can see the megapixel. I mean, sorry, the sensor on the camera. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it is a 1920 by 1080, which is actually really good for an introductory camera. And the quality that I've seen with this, the, the images that I produced in the video, it's really, really amazing, actually. I'm very, very impressed with it. Uh, so I do recommend it. Again, it is the Saboni SB105 digital astronomy camera. Uh, it does come with a 1.25 nose piece which goes into a standard 1.25 nose piece focuser. Uh, if you have a telescope like, like I have here that has a two inch Crayford focuser, most likely it came with a 1.25 step down adapter. Uh, if not, then you might have to invest in one, but most likely your telescope came with one or it just came with a standard 1.25, which is 
Yeah, it's the smaller um, eyepiece focuser uh, thing, which goes. Oops, I gotta remember. I always try to stick this in here without unscrewing the uh, screw. <laughs> Just goes right in. You plug your USB cable in here. The other end goes into your USB 2.0 on your computer. And then of course you start your SharpCap uh, software and then you'll select your camera. Uh, on the top menu bar, it'll say camera. You scroll down, it'll have Savoni SV-105. Again, it is, the, it is a nice little introductory camera. So if you're starting out in astronomy, this is definitely the way to go. It's very affordable. Uh, again, most cameras like this, honestly, run you between 130 to in the thousands of dollars. Actually, I think the highest one I've seen was like four grand. Uh, but again, this is just an introductory camera. It's, some, it's a very basic setup, uh, easy setup, very basic, and it gets the job done, especially if you're an amateur. And it's not, I mean, it's not just designed for amateurs, but it's, it's an introductory for amateurs per se. Uh, but again, it's a nice little camera. Can't beat it. I don't think it runs any more than $60, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think the lowest I seen it was like maybe fifty five dollars. I think might might be lower than that. I'm not sure. I'll put the links in the description where you can get it from. Um, again, also check out some of their other products as well because they do have some great products. Yeah. Um, I if you haven't checked out my page, just kind of look through my videos. I did a red a red dot finder scope. Uh, I did the eyepiece reviews for them. I'm doing this one. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting more products uh, to do some more reviews on. And also test out as well. So again, that is the SV105 from Savoni. Uh, it's a nice little camera. So if you're looking to start out with imaging and stuff like that, that's definitely something to look into. And uh, you might be interested in it. So there's the box, and that's pretty much it. So as always, guys, thanks for watching my channel. Uh, please subscribe. Please share it. And as always, clear skies. Today I'm going to show you how I actually did the setup process to take some of those pictures I just showed you in the review video. Uh, I used both telescopes, my AR-102 by Explorer Scientific, and I also used my C8N Newtonian from uh, Celestron. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Again, this is all going to depend on your camera size, so it's kind of hard to do um, some tutorials on certain things because of the fact that everybody has a different camera, everybody has different telescopes, and and different adapters and all those sorts of things. Um, on my 8-inch Newtonian, I was able to take the camera directly with the 1.25 nose piece and put it right into the uh, the focuser tube, and I was able to achieve uh, focus and get pictures with that with this particular the SV105 camera. If for some reason your telescope cannot achieve focus. There's a couple ways of doing it. One is using an extension tube or a, uh, a Barlow lens. The Barlow lens would just go right in. You tighten your, your camera down in there, and then you put your Barlow lens into your uh, telescope. And this will allow you to achieve focus. Also, it also doubles or triples whatever size uh, Barlow lens you have. If you have a two times or three times, it will double or triple the magnification of the scope as well. So if this is a 1,000 millimeter with a two times bar lens makes it 2,000 millimeter. Uh, so it's having like a large telephoto lens attached to the camera sensor per se. 
on my Explorer Scientific AR-102, um, I was not able to, I had to use my uh, two inch diagonal uh, with the 1.25 uh, step down adapter and I would put the camera directly like that into the uh, diagonal. Now if you have a 1.25 diagonal that's fine because this is a 1.25 nose piece adapter or nose piece so it'll fit fine in there. I have a oh, step down 1.25. Uh, that's how I had to use it with this particular telescope. Now if I wanted to use it without the diagonal, well, I could use the barrel lens and put that into the focuser using the 1.25 adapter. Uh, that would be the way to do that into the into the camera's focuser directly. Uh, but I found I don't always like I don't always like to use the barrel lens, so normally I would just use I just put the and into the, the the diagonal like that, you know. Well, with the with the uh, one point two five adapter, just don't have it in there. It's over there. So, but normally it would sit in there like that on the uh, on this particular camera. I mean, uh, the telescope. And that's how I kind of did it with this one. Again, this is all going to be uh, variant to your particular telescope. You know, if you have a a smaller refractor, or if you have a larger uh, reflector, or a smaller reflector. Um, or if you have a, uh, an STT or an RC, you know, it's going to be a little different. And same thing with settings. When you're doing your settings in the SharpCat program, uh, everything's going to kind of be different because, you know, for me to do a, a live video is kind of hard because what's how I'm setting up my stuff, you know, you may not have this stuff. So, you know, when you're, when you're out there trying, you're like, hey, this is not working for me. So it's a good chance it may not work for you because of the fact that you don't have the same equipment as I have. Uh, but I did try to record the um, a live view of the of me shooting the image and stuff. But unfortunately, when I was using my desktop recording software, it was along with SharpCap or even Backyard EOS. It was shutting off the uh, shutting off the camera, uh, and it was also shutting off my DSLR. So I don't understand why it was doing that. Um, so I couldn't record it live, and I do apologize. But I'll show you in a little quick tutorial how I actually set my settings, you know, the brightness and the gamma and stuff like that to see pictures, you know, to start to see the image show up on the camera itself, on the sensor. Uh, but again, that's using these two particular types of telescopes. So it might be just a little different for you guys, you know, depending on if you own one of these, then you'll understand it. If you own one of these, you'll be able to see and understand it. Um, if you own anything different, it might be a little, you have to play or tweak with the, uh, the control panel a little bit to get the image to show up and stuff like that. So it's, but it's real simple. Trust me, it's it's not that hard. So anybody can do it. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, and I'll show you now the program SharpCap, how I used it, and kind of set it up a little bit. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Okay. The program that this camera uses to capture is called SharpCab. Uh, I use version 3.15. You can actually download it offline. I do not know a version that comes on the disc, but you'll have to kind of check it out. Uh, but you can uh, download it offline. When you go up to, once you plug all your cameras in, you have the software running, you go up to cameras here and you click it on. You'll see the name of the camera. It's the Boney SV105. Click it on. You're naturally going to get a dark screen. Now, don't be alarmed by the dark screen. This is typically normal until your camera focuses in, on the object. Now, if your object is perfectly centered and your telescope is properly aligned, then most likely you'll see it in the center of the screen. Um, that's also provided you have a large enough of a window because you might have to scroll this over. Uh, now, this is not shooting live view, just so you know that, because I've already mentioned that in the video uh, prior to this, that anytime I run this uh, desktop capturing software on my laptop, um, it shuts down the cameras, whether I'm using this camera, uh, the, sub the SB105, or my DSLR and Backyard EOS. It kills the program, so I don't want to do it live. And uh, But I'm going to kind of show you how I set my settings to get Jupiter and the Moon. Um, again, this is also going to be very different for your telescopes as well, because you may not own the same telescopes I have. But I'm just going to show you a desktop picture, or a picture that I've actually taken with this camera right now as a and I'll use that as the video feed per se. Uh, when I'm ready to start, once you have your camera selected, um, 
I us usually pick my target name, whichever one it's going to be. Uh, let's, we'll just use Jupiter, for example, since that's what we're going to talk about. I never use Livestack, just so you know, at least not on this program. If I shoot a lot of video, I'll take Livestack and I'll take uh, the video content that I've uh, recorded and I'll stack it in another program like RegStack or Stackert. When you want to shoot video, um, like once your target's centered and you have it all focused, uh, you might not see it per se. It might be a little dimmer, it might be a little brighter, it might be not bright enough or br too bright. And so what I usually normally do, because it starts out in the ABI format right here, and when it's in ABI, you're actually seeing like a live feed of it per se. So what I go do is I go down, I don't mess with the exposure time yet. Uh, first thing I do is I mess with the gamma a little bit. As you, as you can see, the screen's changing colors a little bit. Now I do have the cap on the camera, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, I usually don't go anywhere. I start out with 100 and I don't go any more than 123. If I start going too far, it starts messing up the film. Sharpness, I always keep on 8. I never go below it and never go above it uh, because, again, it messes with the imaging, at least on the telescopes I own. Brightness, uh, it's either I go all the way to the back to minus 10 to about a minus 8, and that's usually how I keep that. Contrast is the same thing. Uh, sometimes I'll adjust the contrast depending on, you know, the, the object I'm trying to the photo uh, capture and whether or not the moon is out because say for example Jupiter sometimes when the moon is passing by and uh, I'm sorry Jupiter is passing by and the moon's so bright what happens is it, it tends to make it very hard to see Jupiter or you get a very hazy picture so sometimes you got to lower the contrast down a little bit uh, again this is all going to be different depending on your telescope once you get Jupiter into the screen when I'm going to just give you a picture as an example remember because this is not shot live view um, this is about what size you're going to actually see it in your camera uh, on the screen, you know, on your laptop or whatever computer you're using. That's usually about the size you're going to see it. So what I have to do sometimes is go here and go up to like 200 to 250 percent, and then I get to see a little larger image of it. Even though it's going to be a little distorted, it'll start to be a little more, uh, I get to see it larger. And then, of course, I can do a finer focus to get the image focused the best I can. And then once I'm done, I scroll back down, I exit back out to about 100, which makes it about like, you know, oops, that's not what I want to do, I'm sorry. I meant to do it like this. It's like that. Yeah, it's about the, literally about the actual size I see it on my monitor. So with that being said, if I'm going to do video, if it's, it's already set to AVI, I usually hit start capture and I usually do unlimited frames and then I hit start here. Once I'm done capturing all the footage I want to capture, I just go up here and I hit stop capture, which is not highlighted because I'm not recording anything right now. When it comes time to taking images, I go here. If you click on auto, it'll uncheck the auto mode, and it gives you the option to shoot in serve file, AVI files, PNG, bits, JPEG, and TIFF. If you shoot in an AVI format, if you take a snapshot, it's going to always shoot in PNG, um, unless you personally select a different format like JPEG. If you select JPEG, it'll shoot in JPEG. As for the exposure time and stuff, if you look at the camera controls here, um, it starts out at 15.6 milliseconds. Now, I can always go up to as high as uh, 63. Once it starts going higher, it starts getting too bright. Again, it just depends on the, the object you're photographing, whether it be the moon, Jupiter, or sun. Uh, you can always adjust this. There is a little trick I'm going to teach you here, though. If you need to go below 15.6, uh, you can. All you got to do is go like this. The lowest you can go is 7.6. You can type it in. I think it's 7.6 or 7.8. Sorry. And there you have it. Even though you can't control it this way, you have to manually do 7.8. You can't go lower than 7.8. So just letting you know. My frame rate, I always keep on uh, maximum. Again, I don't mess with the auto balance. I don't mess with the filter options or the timestamp framing thing or the applying flats because I'm not doing any stacking or, or, or things like that on this particular thing. I don't mess with the FX stuff. Uh, and that's really pretty much it, what I do to capture my pictures of Jupiter and Saturn and stuff using in the sun using this particular camera. Again, I'm sorry it's not a live view mode, uh, but I'm just kind of showing you my settings on how I do it. Uh, again, 
it'll depend on the telescope you're using and you know and whether you're not using a barrel lens or if you just have it connected directly to your telescope and that's pretty much it guys and then once you're done you know if the you'll, your image will look somewhat decent per se for start sometimes you might have to go in Photoshop and um, oop, let me uh, go here and touch up the color and stuff and the contrast and that was like one of my b better images of it which looks really nice again this is just an introductory camera so but for an introductory camera so it does a really really nice job the video is actually really really perfect see if I take that video and stack it I can get a much sharper image but I don't often do that um, so just letting you know I mean I can do it but I, I generally don't do that so because that takes a lot of time and stuff uh, but that's pretty much it that's that's kind of how you have it and it's like I said it's a really simple program to use it's a really simple camera to use and it does a really amazing job uh, it does shoot at 1920 by 1080 and it goes as low as 320 by 240 at 30 frames per second for video um, so it's not really bad it's actually a really nice size uh, frame for a uh, for an introductory camera uh, it is at 2 megapixels like I said in my video and uh, that's pretty much it uh, I don't think there's much more in the controls I think that's the basic controls so and there you have it that's pretty much it so hopefully that helps you guys uh, you know on your way of getting it all set up and stuff and uh, hopefully you'll have you'll, you'll have an easy time with it as well I mean I had an easy time every first time I did it uh, so you shouldn't have a hard time at all so well anyways guys I want to say thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and as always clear skies